First of all, Merry Christmas. Congratulations, you made it through the crazy season of preparation into the final stretch. Maybe you have a few presents still to wrap or meals to cook, but most of us come to Christmas Eve ready to start coasting through the most important feast day of the secular year, our annual midwinter break from school and work and the drudgery of slushy walks to the same place we walk every day. If nothing else, Christmas gives us a bit of novelty as we go to the unfamiliar shops or new parts of town or connect with people that we don't talk to every day. But before we can open presents in our pajamas, we need to talk a little bit about how we got here, the anxious weeks of preparation under the shadow of disruption. Last year at this time, the newness of it all still had some novelty to it, perhaps. But for many of us, all this lockdown stuff that changed in the last week or two is not unprecedented anymore. It's not a temporary set of circumstances or a detour into uncharted territory. Nope. Not anymore. Unfortunately, a Christmas from the rectory is all too familiar. And so is the waiting in line because the store is full or the logging onto a website to book a vaccine appointment. The event cancellations, all of it, it's not new anymore. It's just life, a thing we have to do now with a COVID shrug. Joseph and Mary would sympathize with us. They too had to obey a government edict that caused massive disruption to thousands of lives. It's easy to romanticize their poverty and the inconvenience of this pilgrimage, but in truth, it was about as romantic as flying economy class home for the holidays. Remember when we used to travel to see people? A modern-day Mary would have to endure the indignity of taking off her pregnancy-swollen shoes for security, and poor Joseph would have forgotten to take the construction nails out of his pockets and would be taken for extra screening. They would arrive in time for the family reunion, but discovered that the hotel was overbooked and had to snooze in the lobby while Joseph called around on his cell phone to find some place, any place with room. The shepherds make a different sort of journey. They aren't important enough to be counted. They literally don't count in the Roman Empire's calculus of power. Because the nomadic shepherds have nothing of value to offer the empire, they are free to go and glorify God without incident. But there is no talk of inns for them. It's the rough ground, and whatever they can find to make it softer a rolled-up tunic if it's warm enough night, or a bundle of brush if it is not. You and I, we know this level of inconvenience. It's not soul-crushing, it's not impossible to bear, but it is the kind of thing we have to deal with with a shrug. Like when you forget to put your mask in your pocket, or you have to cancel dinner plans with friends. It's the accumulation of these inconveniences, the steady drip, drip, drip of them, that makes COVID tide so exhausting, so tiring. Nothing is easy or as straightforward as it once was. Little wonder that I know so many people that are just burned out right now, ready to quit, done with it. And if you're feeling that way right now, I have good news for you. It's Christmas. Officially, for real, tonight. Christmas, right now. And that means it's time to put your work down, put on your jammies, and drink some eggnog. It's time to exchange presents and greetings and just relax for a minute. There is a peace that is about to descend upon the land as the shops close and even the most excited children fall asleep. There is a peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace like the sleep of a newborn baby. Tonight, people all around the world are going to sing that great hymn to the peace of God, Silent Night. The author of the original poem, Father Joseph Moore, wrote it in Austria at the end of the Napoleonic Wars in 1816. No doubt the population of that land was as sick of war as we are of plague. Then a flood damaged the church organ. Father Moore brought his poem to a local musician that he knew, Franz Gruber, and asked him to write a tune that could be accompanied by a guitar. And the rest is history. Silent night. Holy night. All is calm. All is calm. Do you hear in that song a sense of relief that comes from God's peace? It's not an abstract theological principle. It's a feeling. A feeling that we have in response to the coming of God into the world. A feeling that comes after all the journeys we make, after all the preparations, after all the hard times, a calm night, a silent night. Alas, it would seem not to last forever. In the morning, there will be presents to open and phone calls to make. Then will come the new year with its opportunities and challenges, work and school, and all the stuff that we put aside for the midwinter break. But do we have to put that peace aside? Is there a way that we can hold on to it? Jesus, when he's all grown up, says this in Matthew's Gospel. Come to me, 
all that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. It's been a hard 651 days since the first set of COVID lockdowns began. Wouldn't you like a rest? Wouldn't you like some of that peace of God? Come to him, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and he will give you rest. My prayer for you all this Christmas is that you would discover in Jesus some of that peace, and that you would take that peace with you as you go out into the world. I pray that you would not just visit the Christ child, but that you would prepare a manger in your own heart to keep him there with you always, to carry him out with you. And may God bless you and give you a merry and peaceful Christmas. Amen.